Welcome back. We are trying to find a way through that door. And we've collected a bunch of uh, parts that we will need to build the uh, upscaled version of a tennis ball cannon. We got the magnetic docking clamps. We'll still have to wire them up, Captain. That's going to be the real job. We do also have the wire to do that. Captain, I'll need a little help positioning the clamps correctly while wiring them. Captain, push harder. I'll need these tighter to get more power. I'm giving it all I got, Scotty. <laughs> I see what you did there. Um, well, we have the wires, we have the magnets, uh, we need a projectile. We don't have any iron tennis balls, but we do have a big metal lance. One projectile ready to go, Captain. Now all we need is sufficient power and a way to control this thing. This seems pointless. Lights cascade continually above the surface of this device. Magnetic clamps have been positioned on the surface and wired together as a unit. Okay. I guess you can look at it, sort of. Anyway, in order to get enough power, we need to put the uh, capacitors back on. The capacitor should charge very quickly. And you do need both of them. We would just need control, and we have a Klingon control panel here that isn't controlling anything. And... It's one of these wires. Actually, Captain, I don't think these will do. They'd survive firing the beastie, but they don't carry enough current for what we're likely to need. I'm sure we could find something that would work in this place. I think he's talking more about the wiring we used on the clamps, which we already fixed up. No, I don't think that's necessary. So I guess it is the other cable then. A standard 350 micron interface cable. I guess that makes sense. Normal heat resistant wires. We need the interface cable. This end's ready, Captain. All right, looks like the other capacitor charged. I'm not actually sure if you need to wait for that. Let's try and fire. Thank you, Captain. This'll be just like old times. School must miss you dearly, Mr. Scott. That looked like it worked. Alright. Now we can go back into this room. The engineering panel. Look what we've done. A spacesuit. We made a bit of a mess here, didn't we? We had no choice. Remember, who's really at fault here? That we will, Captain. Yes, we had no choice, but it is still a shame that we uh, destroyed these displays. Actually, I forgot something. We do need the capacitors back, even though they will no longer charge on this table. Chekhov takes the capacitor off of the Aurora generator. Chekhov takes the capacitor off of the Aurora generator. Okay, well, what do we have here? All of this stuff has been destroyed. Whatever used to be on this pedestal is now long gone. 
Well, we know what was on there. It was a spacesuit. Shattered remnants of door, ceiling, and unidentified other things lay strewn about the room. The destructive pattern fans out from the ruined door, leaving some areas completely untouched, while others are totally devastated. I guess this is the path of our lance. So I guess it's in here somewhere. The plaque has been badly scoured by flying debris. Whatever used to be on this something here though although badly scuffed when it was blasted free of the ceiling the gas canister and nozzle look functional the curator mentioned these were in each room we could open the door and spray it on the terrorists if it's fast enough to stop them from using their phasers it'll stop us too and they'd get a warning if the door started to open time enough to put the hostages in jeopardy yeah that probably won't work still we might be able to use the gas The gas canister is a bit beat up from the fall, but still functional. Uh, there's two doors here, number nine and number ten. A solid looking door with no handles. I don't think you Save can open it. Game. Replace. Security lockdown is in effect. Please enter access code. All right, let's try the same code. Oh, it does work. There they are! Shoot them! Load a previously saved game. Okay, you could open that door. And I think we found the um, intruders. Looks like they came through a hole in the wall. I'm not sure if you can actually shoot them if you're fast enough. It's definitely not uh, the way we want to go, though. We want to find a uh, more peaceful solution. And we have a transporter as well as a communications console here. Both of which might be of some use. Let's see if Scotty can do anything with them. I don't think McCoy would like this transporter, Captain. Even I would not want to use this one. You? Not use a piece of equipment? Why not, Mr. Scott? This little beastie put out a wee bit of energy discharge during transport. You've heard of the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle? Of course, Mr. Scott. Well, this is the Mulligan Certainty Field, guaranteed to do bad things to you even Dr. McCoy cannot fix. You can block the radiation, but she's not something I'd want to play with unless I absolutely had to. You'd have to repair the wires anyway. And the power unit's been pulled out too. All right. So we need power and wires. We have wires. It wasn't easy, but the wiring's fixed, Captain. It's never easy, is it, Mr. Scott? Aye, Captain. We still need power and our capacitors are depleted and the like I said, the table will not charge them anymore. I think we can do with the communications panel. You think Uhura would like it if we swapped this one for hers? Scotty, I never took you for having a death wish. Actually, Captain, this one's not in bad shape. They took the transmitting gear and she's got no power. But other than that, she's in fine condition. They run a ship-shaped museum here. All right, so that's another option if we can uh, replace the necessary parts and get power. But we can't get what we need from this room, so let's see what we can find through this door. Security lockdown is in effect. Please enter access code. <laughs> There we go. That worked, and we didn't get shot, so I call that a plus. The displays in this room are striking in their contrast. Otherwise, the room is well lit, but unremarkable. 
Well, this is quite an interesting display. Some crystal structure. This display is all glistening angles of crystal, written on the plaque. An early example of the crystalline computers developed by the Lantoids of Tuner 9. Supposedly impossible to access by non-Lantoid life forms, the computer works on a combination of harmonics and light transmission. The Lantoids make physical contact with the computer to operate it. It is said that listening to a Lantoid operate the computer is like listening to a complex musical score played on delicate chimes. The Lantoids view programming as an art form. Kind of is, in a way. I don't know how this works, but looking at it reminds me of the time when I was a boy working on my first electronics project. I built one of those old crystal radios. Maybe this computer somehow projects its answers into your mind. It may be just looking at the crystals made you remember that, Captain. It's possible. Are you now practicing psychology, Mr. Scott? Oh, no, Captain. I'm just a simple country engineer. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Well, if the crystals could be used for crystal radios, maybe they'll help with that transmitter. Can we get some? It probably wouldn't hurt anything to take one crystal. It's just a display, after all. This one looks good. All right, that worked. We got ourselves a crystal. An unusual piece of crystal. The schematics for a Dunkelberger Automated Worker Mark 12. Whatever that is. The plaque reads, The Dunkelberger Automated Worker Mark 12 was a successful entry in the early days of automated labor. The Mark 12 was designed to function as a cargo helper, allowing small manufacturers to cheaply compete against large corporations. Due to their small size, reliability, and obedience, these robots were often treated like pets and given names that were incorporated into their response systems. This particular version was called Barney. All right, I guess this is Barney down here. The plaque reads, the yep. Dunkel... That's the same description. What about this thing? Written on the plaque, Federation Scientific Probe Model 331-19A. The 331-19A was powered by a small fusion reactor since removed. The 331-19A had considerable range but was considered slow. The 331-19A carried a three-ton instrument array. This has also been removed from the display model. This particular probe was used to monitor the collision of Algiers 5 and Algiers 6. One of the double stars at the core of the Algiers system had begun to collapse to a brown dwarf stage, and the resulting fluctuations resulted in the planet's orbital paths crossing, which led to their collision. I've used one of these before, Captain. Everyone notices the fusion reactor, but I'll bet they forgot the fuel cell that served as backup power for the instrument package. It's probably as dry as a bone after all these years. Still, a fuel cell might give us uh, another source of power. Can we do anything with this? The access panel is stuck, Captain. I don't think any of us are strong enough to pull it free. Well, that's not very helpful. Maybe this robot can help. We can't have it do anything until we get it running. Well, we only have discharged capacitors. Worth a try, I guess. There's only a wee bit of juice in this capacitor, but I think it'll be enough to power up the robot. It's a tight squeeze, Captain. I don't think we'd be able to get it back out once it's in. Should I go ahead and do it? We could use the help, Mr. Scott. Energize the robot. Not yet, Mr. Scott. We may need that power elsewhere. Well, I don't think there's enough power in the capacitors to power the uh, transporter or the radio, so might as well use one of them here. We could use the help, Mr. Scott. Energize the robot. And it looks like Barney is functioning. The plaque reads, oh. the Fine. Does it talk? You get no response. I guess it does not. Barney, open the pod bay door. Hooray for Barney!
Written on the plaque, Federation Scientific Probe Model. Okay, okay. I wanted to see if we could look at the insides, but I guess not. I knew it. They forgot to take out the fuel cell. That fusion reactor always scares people enough that they forget the backup cell. It's dry now. You'd need to wet this beauty down and get a catalyst in her. All right, well, we do have uh, cognac. Maybe that'll work as a fuel source. Better than brandies, more than stums. Look out, fuel cell, here she comes. And as a catalyst, maybe the silver tray will work. It's a good thing to build in so much flexibility. The silver isn't a bad catalyst and will act as a contact too. So maybe we can use that to charge our remaining capacitor. All hooked up and charging, Captain. An old style phaser cannon capacitor. It is currently uncharged. Hmm. Seems to be taking a while. Maybe we need a little bit more fuel. I hate to see a sweet liquid used for something other than tasting, but at least it'll work a fair bit in here. All right, maybe that will do the trick. There we go. All ready to go, Captain. Okay, we got a charged capacitor. We actually also need the uh, silver tray back. You remove the silver tray. All right, well, let's see if we can uh, finish fixing the transporter. I think we actually need the plate as well. This should work, I hope. And um, it needs power, obviously. It's in there, Captain. And we can transport the gas canister. It's inside. We should wait until it's time to transport before we activate the valve. Good idea, Ensign. So, we could all of this. Could do, uh, do all of this. We could transport it, and it would knock out the guards. And that's great. But I still kind of want to try and talk to them first. For which we will need the radio. Which also needs power, which means we need to take the capacitor back. If Scotty isn't in the way. That wasn't easy, Captain. I don't think the Beastie wanted to give it up. Sure. So, in order to um, fix the uh, uh, communications device... I think we need to use Kirk on it first. Let him take a look at it. He was their expert after all in crystal radios. I hope the Enterprise looks this good when it's this old. We need the crystal. This reminds me of the time when I was a boy working on my first electronics project. I built one of those old crystal radios. With luck, we'll be able to get this transmitter working. It's been a while, but I think that will work. We need the uh, silver tray as a transmitter, I guess. I rigged up an isolated piece of frame in there as one conducting plate and the tray as the other. It's not the best solution, but it's the best I can do here. I'm sure it'll be good enough.
And then this too will need power. I think you'd need to do the transporter thing first in order to get all the points. But you don't want to actually use the transporter. All hooked in, Captain. Alright. Let's see if it works and see if we can reach somebody. Well, let's see how well this works. Kirk to Enterprise. Kirk to Enterprise. Enterprise, come in. Who is this? This is Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Seems we've reached somebody, but not the Enterprise. Who are you? Whoever you are, call for help. There are terrorists in the museum. This is Captain Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. I'm in the Smithson Museum, where hostages are being held. That seems to be the most useful reply. How interesting. I'm in the Smithsonian Museum holding hostages. Who am I talking to? Sounds like we found the uh, terrorists. You should give up immediately. You have no chance. I'm holding a Corbomite device. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work this time. Why don't you and I discuss this? Who am I talking to? Let's find out who they are. My name is Lucas. I'm a member of the Lockean family, Onakin. I've never heard of the Onakan family. It's no surprise you haven't heard of us, even though we're one of the largest and oldest families on Lockean. Just shows how much the Federation believes the lies the Serenci pass along. The Serenci are your enemies? I find it unlikely the Federation will take sides. Of course the Federation backs the Serenci. You don't see them taking hostages and setting traps for museum curators, do you? I mean... It's got a point. The Serenci, I find it unlikely the Federation will take sides. We'll go with this one, though. If the Federation isn't backing the Serenci, how do you explain a ceremony giving the Serenci the Quelke? Obviously, the Federation believes their lies. The Quelke? You mean the probe? It is more than just a probe to us. The Quelke discovered Lachian generations ago. The entire race owes its existence to the Quell K. I knew it had great significance. I just didn't know there was anyone else involved. This is when the original planet was on the verge of being destroyed? I thought the Serenci ruled your race. Shouldn't they be the ones that controlled the Kelki? Obviously they don't think so, so telling them that is not gonna ingratiate ourselves. I knew it had great significance. I just This is when the original planet was on the verge of being destroyed? Let's keep him talking. We have as much claim to that probe as anyone. It sounds like you have a legitimate grievance. Does the Serenci also have a right to the Kelki? Then why is the museum handing the Kelki over to the Serenci? Good question. It's because you're a pack of idiots. You have no idea what's going on. No idea who should have the Quelke. Does the Serenci also have a right to the Kelki? Idiots, huh? Would an idiot do this? I, I think so. That is what an idiot would do. Hang up. Does the Serenci also have a right to the Kelki? Of course they do, but no more than we have. Then this situation should be looked into more closely by the Federation. We're here with the best intentions. You want peace? We want peace. Then release the hostages now, and we'll talk about a solution. Then this situation... Then release the hostages now, and we'll talk about a solution. They might be able to see uh, that point of view. We deal from power. If you agree to release the hostages now, the Federation would not only keep the Kelki out of the Serenci's hands for now, but send in mediators to help find a peaceful solution for all. And so do we. Power is something we have far more of than you. You would be wise to give up now and end this foolishness. That doesn't sound like it'll work. If you agree to release the hostages now... Is that an offer? That's a guarantee. Obviously, I'll have to check with my superiors on this, but I'm certain something can be worked out. That's a guarantee. I think we can guarantee that. Kirk has enough pull to uh, make that happen. Then we have a deal. We will turn off the security override and give ourselves up. And trust the word of Captain Kirk. Mr. Chekhov, have Dr. McCoy beam down to make sure the curator and guards are all right. Mr. Scott, Lower the museum shields and have a security team beamed aboard. Captain's log supplement. The terrorists had already turned off the security override. After putting the three Onicons in custody, it was decided that the probe would not be returned to the Serenci. Federation mediators will visit Lachian to assist in the negotiations on the fate of this artifact. The fact that they gave up voluntarily when they could have possibly escaped and injured no one certainly made points for the Onicons' claim. 
Curator Bresnia was treated by Dr. McCoy and is in good health. Commendations are in order for Scott and Chekhov for meritorious service. Lieutenant Uhura, send a message to Admiral Richards. Tell him he owes me more than he thinks he does. Aye, sir. I have a feeling he's not going to be surprised. I'm afraid I'm going to remember this mission with a great deal of sadness, Captain. Why is that, Mr. Scott? It was such a fine cognac, Captain. It was just waiting for us, and now it's gone forever. Such a waste. You always remember the one that got away. Uh, sure, Scott. Captain, message incoming from Starfleet. I see they got our report. On screen. I have reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain, and have a few comments. I am very pleased with your performance. It was a perfect mission, Jim. Your reputation as Starfleet's best starship captain is secure. Kane out. Another perfect mission. I was kind of worried that having Scott drink the cognac would ruin that, but fortunately it did not. Will this be Captain's madness? Captain's Log Stardate 6169.3 While delivering supplies to outposts near Klingon and Romulan space, we received a distress signal from the Romulan neutral zone. On screen, Captain. This is Sub-Commander Guyon of the Warbird Infinitus. We are under attack. Assist us, please. Transmission jammed at the source, sir. The transmission originated on the Romulan side of the neutral zone. Captain, this could be a setup. The Romulans might be trying to lure us into a treaty violation. We can't interfere in Romulan business. Take us to our next mission. This day is not going well. Captain, we have an emergency message from Starfleet. Code 1. That's a planetary catastrophe. On screen. Captain. A very large alien ship is about to land on the planet Atavis in the Klingon neutral zone. The aliens stated that they intend to land in the midst of the capital city. Then the ship cut communications with us. Since then, all attempts to contact the alien craft have failed. You are the closest starship to Atavis. We want you to evaluate the situation and safeguard the colonists. We need you to make contact with the aliens. All right. That wouldn't be good if they land in the middle of a city. Probably people would get hurt or killed. Well, I guess they could evacuate. They know they're coming, but it would still cause a lot of damage. I believe that if you um, do have uh, combat on, you will actually go to help the uh, Romulans in the neutral zone. And you will have to fight there, which I think is the last battle of the game. But since we have combat disabled, that did not happen, and we just continued with the mission. And now it seems we have to go and find out who is trying to uh, land in the middle of a city, and dissuade them from doing so. But we'll do that in the next video.